there is nothing of this world that will really satisfy my heart. There is no amount of success. There's no soulmate. There's no, um, you know, there's this uh, beautiful statement, this in, in, in Bhakti literature that there's, you know, this is how I phrase it anyway. There, you know, there's a God-shaped hole, a God-shaped mm-hmm. hole in the heart and we'll shove anything in that hole. And we're looking to shove anything to feel connected, but only God will fit in that hole. Mm. And we try to, the three main things that we really try to put in that hole are, we feel like there is a person out there that will make me complete. Mm. And it's been romanticized. Yeah. And there are people that we connect with, there's people that we love, but they're not our God. They can't be our God and we shouldn't make them our God or we're, we're setting ourselves up for hell in the future and, or we're gonna become incredibly needy or they're gonna be needy. It's gonna be a real dysfunctional relationship. So the person shouldn't be our God. And the next one is there's no amount of, um, f- there's no amount of uh, financial uh, you know, height you can go to that will actually satisfy that yourself too. There's no amount of money you can put in that God-shaped hole and the final one is there's no um, an amount of validation, material validation. You can find people who sometimes get the most validation yeah. and they're sometimes even more screwed up. Mm-hmm. And I started feeling like, yeah, there's nothing of this world. And I remember sitting in a yoga center once and reading this quote from a Swami saying, you must become materially exhausted to, to start your spiritual life. You have to like be cynical with material success, be, give up hope. And I was always a very positive person. Matter of fact, I'd read these books early on in my life and think, oh, these yogis, they're, they're so negative about life. What's wrong with life? Life is good. I've got so much hope. But you have to be cynical with material hope. You can be very, very, um, uh, you can believe in spiritual fortune. Like you're, there, there is a spiritual success, but material success is a dead end. And so when I saw my father going down so hard, so, so sad, I started to realize, yeah, this, is un- this material world is an unfair place. Yeah. Well, that's an amazing you know, kind of epiphany to have as a young person. And it's not like you were you know, living in a mansion at the top of the hill, like you were getting success but you didn't have to hit some kind of crazy bottom um, or you know, spend the better part of your entire life chasing some material need in order to have that reckoning. Like I think it's, a, it's, it's unbelievably true that you have to have that existential crisis of one form or another and to shock you out of your, you know, the Maya of your, your, <laughs> your daily existence mm. that can come in the form of something disastrous or when you've just exhausted as much, you know, chasing of material success as is humanly possible. But at either end of that spectrum is a reckoning that will compel you to confront yourself in a more meaningful way. But you were able to do it as a very young person. I think, most of us in Western culture who are, you know, in the biggest picture of things, we're haves, we have. We, we've been to the best beaches, we've been to the coolest places, mm-hmm. we've traveled around the world. It always boils down to this whole big deal. I did it, I went to the Eiffel right. Tower, big deal. But the, to persistent, the, the persistence of the illusion <laughs> is so woven into the fabric of our culture. Like, it's like, yeah, I did that, but okay, so I felt good for a minute, that faded. Well, it must be the next thing. And, or, exactly. and when it's not that, it's the next thing because I got to keep up with this guy. And, and that's why most spend important. their entire life chasing that. Yeah, or trying to get some material bucket list, which it, it really boils down to big deal. You be, there's, here I am, it's perfect, big deal. Uh-huh. Now what? Or this is another <laughs> great one, now what, now what? Uh-huh. And I think when you get to that point, you're like, yeah, now what? Then it makes you realize, okay, life isn't about trying to put your foot on every continent, on every like perfectly Caribbean Caribbean beach. And it's about what is my offering in this world? I had such a great day with Greg today. What is my offering in this world? And when I see people like yourself, people are just connected like, okay, we're here for a short amount of time. What am I here to give? And that's when life I feel like really becomes successful. Mm -hmm. Um, And you feel very fortunate and very connected 
and you enjoy waking up in the morning and there's no, oh crap, it's Monday or uh, Friday, thank God it's Friday, where like, I feel like I could do what I do 24 seven. I have one of, I'm one of these very like hyper, I could, yeah. I could do what I do every day and for hours a day and I love what I do. And I just feel like uh, we ha it's important to, to shine light on the romance of uh, what, what Hollywood creates or what even just people's personal Maya creates in their mind. Like, well, if I was in this situation, I'd be better off. If mm -hmm. I lived out here, I'd be better off. If I, if I could only find some time away. I, that, that getting fame at an early age, and even though it wasn't huge fame, getting that fame, it punctured the romance mm. of what a lot of people, it's, it's a long, long, attractive dead end. <laughs> <laughs>